after it is done. Okay. Now the recording started. So let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and where I left off before because this is so important. I'm going to reintroduce the reintroduce this. We've been talking about uh, the covenantal uh, provision in the Lord and um, why we can have the provision. Amen. Why we can have the provision, why we should have the provision, what the provision is for. And when the provision comes, to understand that whatever provision God gives us, it's not just for ourselves. <laughs> That's, I think, very important that we understand that. So, uh, the first session we talked about because that Jesus Christ on the cross became poverty. Amen. That's why we can be provided for. And we talked about that. And we went into a lot about righteousness and stuff like that anyway. You'll have to listen to it. It's a lot of about the working of the cross in Jesus taking lack and poverty and want upon himself and the curse. The curse that was operating in do us fell on Jesus. And he died and was buried. And when the payment was made in full, he rose again. So us, by repenting towards God, putting our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, becoming his disciple, following him and obeying him, we are in the practice of the covenant of God, founded in Jesus' life blood. Therefore, all that Jesus has, all that he's accomplished, all that's in his name, right, comes to us through that provision. It's on it's all on him, what he's done, why it comes to us. Now, we have some things that the Word of God says how we should respond, how we should act in order to stay in that flow. And, and we, we talked about that a little bit. But we got right to the root and the foundation of why. All right, now, we ended on this note, but it was like 70 or so minutes in, and a lot of people probably won't listen to the video all the way through. So I want to start this one with it. Uh, they should. And um, now, again, talking of Jesus Christ, Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Uh, we understand that poverty is a curse and lack is a curse. It's not a blessing. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you think poverty is a blessing, go to a country that's under the curse of God and poverty is at work. That's why you cannot legislate. You cannot legislate to end poverty. And this is the folly that we began in America under Lyndon Baines Johnson. We announced a war on poverty in social programs. And people, you cannot undo the curse of God. Only Jesus Christ has undone the curse of God. You can preach all the social justice you want. You can legislate it. But all you're going to do is make everybody broke. Everybody's going to dry up. And you will have destroyed through your false gospel. You will have destroyed even God's people. Because you will suck all the money out of that system that makes it go round. Nevertheless, I want to say, God's people, get if you have your focus on the covenant, then we can expect the Lord to provide. One of the things the Lord has said to us, and again, just the other day, we're in Florida, so we don't see, in South Florida, we don't see a whole lot of ravens. But uh, the Lord uh, the other day had the ravens flying, flying by and squawking by the house. Now, being a New Yorker and living in upstate New York, we know what crows are. We know what ravens are. We have a lot of them up there, you know, and coming from farm territory and they try to grab all the stuff and um, sometimes when you're in cities they come there and they fill city parks and the trees and you know it's like a haunted thing but or whatever but uh, but anyway um, so we know they are so it's not that common in Florida to see a whole flock of uh, uh, ravens and so God was reminding us of a promise and where he said and remember what he did for Elijah that even if he had to command the ravens to come and feed us, God will command them to feed us. Even if God has to command the very birds of heaven to bring provision to us, to carry it in their beaks, even when it's against their nature, 
like ravens. It's against their very nature to share anything with anybody. As a rule, one will get on something, the others will attack them to get it away from them. So that's God's dominance over all the creation. And so even if God has to command ravens to provide for us, God will command the ravens to provide for us. Amen? Amen. All right, so uh, let's look here again. So why uh, we can have provision and why we're blessed and the favor of God is upon us. Because Jesus Christ did the work, amen? So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Yes. Right? So the law said you got to do this and don't do that, do this and don't do that, do this and don't do that. Otherwise you're cursed. Now inside of the law are many different kinds of curses. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Now what also does it mean about hanging on a tree? What, what, what is it that God said about the one that hangs on a tree? Not just curse, but what? They're a rebel. That rebels get hung on trees, amen? The iniquity, a, curse, a cursing, the iniquitous, right? The, the people believed that if a person was hung, it meant they were in rebellion against God. They were a rebel against God. So cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. And many remember Absalom with King David? Tried to usurp his kingship, uh, usurp him as leader, even though David a king and a prophet. Amen? And Absalom kept, and he, you know, he got away with it a couple times, and David even said in the end, don't even when he tried to overthrow the old kingdom, David said to his generals, don't touch him. And the kid, then Absalom tried to run, and what happened? He was riding to get away on his horse when they were losing the battle, and what happened? He got caught in a tree and he was hanging. A curse of God for his rebellion. And even though the king said, don't do anything, the general threw darts like uh, that's daggers in him anyway and killed him the rest of the way. Even though David said not to because his general was not going to let him come to overthrow his king again like the second, third time or whatever. So cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree, right? So... So Jesus went on that tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Again, we said last time that to be in Christ Jesus meant that you have to come to him through the cross. And then you come to God in repentance towards God, confessing your evil deeds, and then you come into faith, believing Jesus died for you, was buried, rose again. And through Jesus, you also were crucified on that cross and died. So all your poverty and lack died with Christ. Galatians chapter 2, like verse 19, uh, 19 and 20. I was 19 and 20. I was crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but now Christ lives in me. I died. The rebel died. The old man died with all his poverty, with all his curses, with all his sickness, with all his disease. Died with Christ on the cross. Amen. And I was buried with him. And then the third day, when God justified all those who would believe in him, I was raised to a newness of life with him, a new creation. So as a new creation, I have a covenant with God. I'm in covenant with God, sealed by his life blood. Therefore, I am blessed of God. Therefore, I am provided for. Therefore, I shall not lack, I shall not want for any good thing. That is the truth. Anything else is a circumstance. The circumstance may be because you're in spiritual attack. The circumstance may be because you're doing things against God still, practicing them. And that may be why it is. The circumstance may be that we're practicing sin. The circumstance may be that we don't have the knowledge of God. And again, the circumstance may be spiritual warfare. That the devil is trying to change the truth of the reality of what God has done for us in Jesus. He's roaring. He's seeking who he may devour and roaring. So it's that the blessing of Abraham come upon us in Christ Jesus. How do we come in Christ Jesus? By believing in him. Therefore I died when was buried and rose again. The day I believed I was translated out of the darkness, right, out of the kingdom of darkness, which has its curses. Amen? Which has its curses. Amen? I was trans God has cursed the kingdom of darkness. Yes. God has cursed the devil. All the workers of wicked all the works of wickedness, certain things God has cursed. So anybody who practices them, whether you say you believe in Jesus or not, anybody who practices them. 
comes back under it. You understand? Now, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay, now I want you to go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Okay, now, verse, let's read a little bit. Here's blessings and cursings in here. And let's read a little bit about this for a minute. Verse 45, he says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed. Let's hear this again. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God. Or, the margin says, did not listen to. How many of us right now are not experiencing a provision because we did not listen to the voice of the Lord our God? So that's the first thing I do. When, when some begins to affect my provision, I go to the Lord. I say, Lord, am I not listening? Lord, am I missing something? Lord, am I... That's the first thing I do. Now, I'm not afraid because this is my Father. I'm not afraid because He wants me to understand. I'm not afraid because He wants me on the right path. So... He's trying to communicate, and I need to get on it. But that may not be the case. But that's the first place I go. Have I missed you in obeying some voice that you've given me? Have I missed the timing of the thing? Do I have the wrong priorities? Is something else your priority? And I'm doing minimal things when I'm not. When you've given me the priority, am I am I busy with nothingness? So moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue you. So come upon you and pursue. That says it'll chase me down. Now, the good news is, believer, the good news, believers, is the blessings will pursue you also and overtake you. It's almost like it's a living entity. Huh? Well, there is something that's alive. It's a spiritual reality that something is implementing blessings and something is implementing curses. Amen? And all of them are implemented by where do you position your life? What flow are you standing under? Who are you listening to? Who are you obeying? And where are you standing? So he says again, verse 45, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and statutes which he commanded you. So there's things that God has told us to do, and when we don't do them, Amen? Curses can come upon us and even will pursue us and chase us down and come upon us. So we need to look at that. Now, many of you are never taught about the ways that curses come. And uh, that's another part of the teaching we want to do that's in the redemption of Christ. So we know not to do the things that God has already announced curses upon. And, if, and we need to obey the Lord. Amen? Now, verse 46. And they shall be upon you as a sign and a wonder and on your descendants forever. So it is a sign and a wonder from God. The outworking of curses is a sign and a wonder to people. Poverty is a sign and a wonder by God that those are in rebellion against God and He is not providing for them. Now, Let's just cover two of them right now. You will not have any idols. No, you know, no graven images, no, no idols, right? And so people want to have idols. Well, that is a breaking of God's command and a curse comes. How about this? You will have no other God, only me. And I'm going to say it like that because in the English there's no other gods besides me. And everybody's trying to see, well, let's see, God is one inch taller than my other God. Maybe my spouse is my God. Maybe my children is my God. Maybe my job is my God. Maybe the government is my God. Maybe the government's provision is my God. Maybe government health care is my God. Huh? Who's my God? Who's my God? Amen? Now God has announced himself as I am your provider. I am your healer. 
Now, who are you looking to as your provider and who are you looking to as your healer? Are you attacking your spouse because you don't have everything you want? Well, maybe you're attacking God, not your spouse, because God is your provider. And if, that, what, if that's what God is laying on the table, then you need to go to God and find out why there's not more laid on the table, if you really need more. But maybe God is telling you that there's places that you're spending on yourself you don't need to. Huh? Maybe God is telling you you're trying to have everything of the world and you're not thinking about the things of the kingdom of God. You say, brother, you're crazy. Well, how come he said it through one of his prophets then? You go out, you get all your money, and it's in a big bag, but by the time you bring it home, you grab in the bag and it's empty. There's not enough. It's empty. And the Lord said, is it because the Lord poked a hole in the bag? Is it because the Lord blew all that money away? Yeah, it is. It is because you're doing what's cursed. You're selfish and not thinking about the others. You're not thinking about building the kingdom of God. Remember what he said. Seek, first of all, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his right way of doing things, and he will add all these things to you. So we are not to seek the things. We are to seek him, his kingdom, his rule and reign over our lives, his way of doing things. And when we do that, he said, I will provide for you. I am your provider. In that pursuit, you don't have to be like the unbelievers thinking about, what am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to wear? Right? He said, he will just add them to you. And then what you need to develop in your life is contentment. You see, if we lust for the eyes and lust for the flesh, and pride of life is our motivation, we never have contentment. We never have peace. How many divorces that leads to? And murmur and complain about the provision. Right? You're murmuring and complaining to God because that's what he has provided. And if it's not enough in agreement with what the Word of God says, the level that God wants to get you to, and that is that you have need of nothing and have an abundance so that left that you're able to give to every good work. So not only is it sufficient, but you have more. But we have to first of all look at is, are, do we not have enough because of the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life? Do we not have enough because we covet? Which Colossians covetousness is idolatry, which no idolater will inherit the kingdom of God. Neither will the covetous, neither will the extorters. Hmm? Now, so it is a sign. So social justice, taking money from some to give to the others, is it not going to change God's sign? They still will remain in poverty. Why? Because they've never had the gospel of Christ preached to them, whereby they can repent towards God, put faith in Jesus, come into the blessings of Christ, come into the blessings of Abraham. And that's why the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed us to preach the good news to the poor. Not to preach social justice to the poor so that they go to the government, so the government takes money from other people, amen, and gives it to them. Because you give it to the curse and it will disappear with the curse. It is a sign and a wonder by God. And those of them that are doing that are anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-salvation, and fighting against God's revelation, and fighting against the power of God, and it will come to nothing except for judgment. And so if you look at the United States Entitlement Programs people, this is where you are. Government will take care of you. Government will give you something, so give them their vote. Government will give them something you didn't earn, or earn, you didn't work for, you didn't earn, you're not entitled to, except for they said, give me your vote and I'll give it to you. And that's where unions have got to, too. Taking more from the profit of the companies give to you. Are some companies covetous? Yes. Are some companies selfish and uh, uh, selfish and greedy? Yes. But the bottom line is, God is judge and God will deal with that. 
The bottom line is when they're prospering out of that overflow, God can get more to us people. Do you trust God or what? And the bottom line is that those who follow God's ways and God's principles, even if they're in the same business as those others, God will rise them up to be the dominant one. But we all want a shortcut because we're in a hurry. We want to take shortcuts to get there. And we take shortcuts that are a curse, and it will not work. Moreover, all these curses, verse 45, shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded you. Verse 46, and they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder and on your descendants forever. In other words, it will move to the next generations. Now, curses move to the third and fourth generation and blessings move to a thousand generations. So the blessings are much stronger than the curses. The curses are there only until a person comes in Jesus Christ, believes in him, and then obeys what he says. But if that person goes back and practices again that which is a curse, Jesus can't help him. He is the word of God. He is the word of God that removes curses, but he is the word of God that enforces curses. Amen? Now, verse 47 says, Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of all. So have, are you serving God with joy and abundant, uh, uh, with joy and thankfulness for what he has given you? Now, the apostle taught in Timothy, he said, by the Holy Spirit, he said, some suppose that gain is godliness. Now that's a false teaching that we've had. Look at what I got. Look how blessed I am. Look at all the things I have. That's not proof of godliness. Some suppose that gain is godliness. That's not godliness. Godliness is godliness. A lot of people have gain. The guy who goes and robs a bank, when he comes out of that bank, he's got, he's got gain. But that doesn't mean godliness. Huh? You got Satan worshipers, right? They do all kinds of manipulation and this and that, and lie and cheat and steal and deceive, and people that extort and everything else, and they got gain. Huh? Look at all the Wall Street frauds and look at all these other fraudsters and everything they've done with all these so-called investments and all these schemes. Amen? Huh? They got gain. Is that godliness? Just because a person has gain, that doesn't mean godliness. There's a lot of naive and gullible people out there, and there's a lot of deception working. And, and, and the power of Satan to deceive is, is, uh, is real. Is real. Amen? We need the Holy Spirit. We need discerning of spirits. Amen? We need a word of knowledge from the Lord. We need to be led by God's Spirit. Amen? All right? So they will not be tricked by the wiles of the devil and by the wiles and trickery of his people, those that serve him. Amen? If the devil can masquerade as an angel of light when he's an angel of darkness, if he can make himself look like an angel of light and even fool angels, amen, is it any great thing that his workers transform themselves like they're workers of righteousness? No, it's no great mystery. They can also look like they're, like they're doing the right thing like it's the right thing, amen? Okay, so having a big gang of people, you know, having a big church does not mean that that's a worker of righteousness still can be a worker of Satan. Amen? And you'll know them by their words. You'll know them by their fruits and by their words and by their work. Amen? The Holy Spirit will glorify Jesus Christ. Not man. The Bible tells us the true condition of man. The Bible tells us about how man really is. Amen? And all the feeling good about yourself isn't going to save you, people. It will not save you. Being right with God will give you peace. And that peace within, amen, is the assurance that everything is okay between you and your God. Even in the midst of all kinds of hell coming all around you, Peace within is your assurance that you're okay with God. Amen. Now, 
And they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder, verse 47, verse 40, uh, verse 47, excuse me, verse 47, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Now, again, the apostle said again in Timothy, godliness with contentment is great gain. We didn't bring anything in this world. We're not bringing anything out. Godliness with contentment. How many marriages would be saved? Just with godliness in that home, with contentment. One of the signs of the end, the Holy Spirit said to the apostles, 2 Timothy chapter 3 is, unthankfulness and unholiness. Lovers of self, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. And then unthankful, unholy, irreconcilable. Huh? Come on, people. That's not supposed to be in the church. That's supposed to be outside of the church. All these things are against God. They're a curse. They're, they're breaking of the law of God. The total fulfillment of the law of God is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, all your strength, everything you have. That means surrender everything, give everything to God to obey Him, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the way you exercise it out in a practical manner. Amen. And to love God, Jesus said, is to obey His commands. Amen. So by obeying his commands, amen, the blessings of God come upon us. By disobeying his commands, that's rebellion, the curses are upon us. It's that simple. Yes. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. You want blessings, you want curses. You want life eternal, you want wrath of God for eternal. Life with God eternal or wrath in a lake of fire eternal. What do you want? It's that simple, black and white. Yea or nay, righteousness or unrighteousness. Amen. So now, uh, verse 48. So he said, because you didn't serve the Lord, then verse 48, therefore you shall serve your enemies. Who's your enemies? Well, the devils are your enemies. Demons are your enemies. Curses are your enemies. You'll serve them. They'll bring you under the burden of them. Of, they'll bring you under bondage and burden to them. Therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you. Who sent them? Who sent them? The Lord. the Lord will send them against you. Amen? Fear the Lord, people. Be at peace with God. Make peace with God. Do what he says. Fear the Lord, the beginning of wisdom. And therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you. In what? Hunger? In thirst, in nakedness, and in need of all things. You see? So if we don't, if we find that the curse is working a little bit, man, we better get in the cross. We better make sure we're okay with God. Now, we can be provided for, right? And then we need to press. We need to make it right. Confess whatever needs to be confessed. Adjust whatever needs to be adjusted. Put the right practices in place, right? Yeah. All right? Otherwise, the Lord will send these enemies, but then he'll withdraw those enemies, won't he? When we make peace with God, he'll tell them to back off, won't he? Amen. And he will put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he has destroyed you. This is a sign and a wonder of those that rebel against God. People, the secular humanist Satanists want to take all the money from those who have served God in the years past and God has provided for, they wanted to take it to develop this utopia society to all those who have not even ever had the gospel preached. They're living under the curse of God and poverty has come to make their utopia society. They're selling us all a pack of lies about the environment, about social justice and all this to exploit and steal money to rape and steal out of the coffers and treasuries of the nations, and thereby to bring them all and bow them all down and set up their one world government under their one man. But it'll never happen. It will never succeed. It's going to form, it's going to come to pass, but it will never come to fullness. Because Jesus will have already begun opening. He will have already opened the scroll. 
and piece by piece release 21 judgments upon the earth to stop that and all wicked to go with it. Their religion is secular humanism, but make no mistake, behind it is Satan. And Satan desires worship. And this is his last shot at setting up his system on the earth where all human beings will worship Satan. That's his desire. But Jesus will not allow it. He will judge. Now, people, the cosmic warfare is spilling over into the earth. You better be at peace with God. You better be ready to go with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, praise God. Now, so I wanted to share that with you. So in Jesus, all he became a curse for us. Amen. That the curse of the law, all of those judgments of the law, fell on Jesus. The righteous requirement of the law to obtain to have audience with God. One had to attain to righteousness for God, for them to have audience with God and for God to respond to them, for God to hear their prayers. No man could do it because by nature we were rebels. Jesus did it. God in the flesh did it. And then he went to the cross and was punished with our punishment so that God could justify any who would believe in Jesus, anybody who would then repent of their rebellion and put their faith and trust in Jesus and now do things God's way, they could come under the blessings of Abraham. They could be delivered from the curses of the law. And by their obedience to God now, walking in that discipleship, picking up that cross, doing things God's way, they can be under the blessings of God. Amen. And God said, I am now your provider. I redeem you from where you were in those curses, and now I am your provider. I redeem you from those sicknesses and diseases through the cross and the resurrection of Jesus, and now I am your health and healer. Amen? Amen. And I am your victory, and I am your peace. Right? Jehovah Shalom, I am the Lord your peace. Amen? So we can have peace even in the midst of a fallen, dark world yeah. where lawlessness and rebellion is abounding yet more and more, and believers, the Lord Jesus warned us that believers' love will grow cold in these days So because of lawlessness, so you need to arm yourself with what he said so that you'll not give in to that. You've got to strengthen your love in God. And then by obeying him. And then by being saturated in his word and worship to him and his presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit and really seeking God in the fear of the Lord to be led by God's spirit and then obeying what he tells you to do. And in that, you're creating this whole atmosphere of knowing that you're right with God, knowing you're walking with God, knowing you're ready for whatever's in front of us ahead. However much longer the Lord tarries, however far we got to go into this lawlessness and this darkness and this setting up of a one-world government with a one-world ruler and a one-world financial system, which necessitates a collapse of the current financial system so they can lord it over. And all these people are in place and they've been planning it for centuries. And they openly, many of them, openly acknowledge Satan, Lucifer, as their God. But he's not Lucifer anymore. Lucifer is who he was before the fall, but they acknowledge Lucifer as if he's still winning the battle. That's how deceived they are. Because once Lucifer fell, his name became Satan. And Michael the archangel and the other angels will shortly be removed from protecting Israel to fight uh, to fight Satan and his angels in the heavenlies and throw them down to the earth. Woe to the earth. For Satan has come down having great wrath, knowing he has just a number of days left. There will be great tribulation in those days, such as never been known. Now, in Jesus, God as your Redeemer has all provided peace for you in the midst of this. Provision for you in the midst of this. Health and healing for you in the midst of this. Amen? Amen. 
And no matter what it takes, whether God takes us up out of here, whenever he does, or whether he preserves us like he preserved the children of Israel in Egypt and coming out of Egypt as they buy the Passover lamb, by the blood on their doorposts and lentils. They were kept, and the destroying angel could not touch their house. So the destroying angel can't touch our house. Keep the blood. When we talk about the redemption in Jesus, the Lamb of God, it was the blood yeah. of the Lamb that provided these things for us. His life in the blood that provided right. that I not lack, that I not want for any good thing, that all of my provision is taken care of. That what I need for, for my day-to-day, -day, for my family, is taken care of. Yes. Amen? And not only that, but it gives even more than that. So that I can be a blessing to others and give to others. Amen? Amen. Now, we are the people of covenant. Now, enter the covenant. Practice the covenant. Do what the covenant says so that God can pour out upon us so we can be that shining light in the midst of a dark and dying world. Amen? Amen. And that will be able to freely and boldly announce the word of God all the way until Jesus said that's enough. Amen? Yes. Amen? So that they can repent towards God, put their faith in Jesus. Amen? And come into this peace in Jesus. So he is our peace. He is our victory. Amen? He is our healer. Amen? He is our provider. Amen? Amen. Now, not only did he heal them, he healed them and kept them in health. How about their material provision? Their sandals didn't even wear out 40 years. Huh? Walking on sand. That's sandpaper on the bottom of your leather sandal. And it didn't wear out. Come on, people. Our God is mighty, powerful to do this for us. Amen. Amen. He's working and his angels are released to carry out this word. Say to him right now, Lord, I receive this word. Say, Lord, I receive this word. Lord, I receive this word in Jesus' name. Lord, I receive this word. This in is name. your word, Lord. This is your word. This is your provision. This is your provision. Lord, you've already provided. You've already provided. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. All this is part of your provision. All this is the part peace. Of the peace. The health and healing. The health and healing. The sandals not wearing out. The sandals not wearing out. Provide for me. Provide for me. That which we need to consume. That which we need to consume. And be up and above and beyond that so that I can give to every good work. And up and above and beyond it. So Whatever you leave me to do. Whatever you leave me to I do. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I speak to you, angelic host. Repeat. Now I speak to you, angelic host. According to that word. According to that it word. It is done unto me. It is done to me. It is mine. It is mine. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I release you now. I release you now to enforce, to enforce and execute the judgment, execute the judgment upon these words, upon these words in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you that you have given angelic hosts to host each of us personally, to each of us personally and around us, and around us that are to minister, that are to minister to the heirs of salvation, the heirs of salvation of which I am, of which I am. And now, and now, according to the word of the Lord, according to the word of the, the Lord, word of the Bible. Word of the Bible. The will of God. The will of God. Which is the Bible. Which is the will which of is his word. His word. The angels are released. The angels are released. To go forth. To go forth. And accomplish that word. Accomplish that word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The angels hearken diligently. The angels hearken to diligently. watch over that word. Watch over that word. And to perform it. And to perform it. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You watch over your word to perform it. Watch over your word to perform it. And I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. No word returns to you void. No word returns to you void. It does not return to you without accomplishing its task. It does not return to you without accomplishing its task. And we have spoken your words today. We have spoken your words today. We have sent them forth in the air. We have sent them forth in the air. We have sent them forth against principalities and powers. Sent them forth against principalities and powers. The rules of the darkness of this age. The rules of the darkness of this age. And wicked spirits. And wicked spirits. And men. And men. And Lord, we've presented them before you. And we've presented them before you. And your words. And your words. Are not useless. Are not useless. But they accomplish the task. They accomplish the task. Of what they proclaim as eternal truth. What they proclaim with Truth. And it does come to us in Jesus' name. It does come to us in Jesus. And we ask you, Father. We ask you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If there's anything that's standing in the way of my life. If there's anything standing in the way of our life. By life, the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. Reveal it to me, Father. Reveal it to me, Father. That I might repent of it. I 
and repent of it. That I might confess it. Confess it. That I might have it washed away in the blood of Jesus. Have it washed away in the blood of Jesus. Lord, I desire to walk in the light. Lord, I desire to walk as in the light. He is in the light. He is in the light. So that I can have fellowship one with another. I can fellowship one with True another. fellowship. True fellowship. And that the blood of Jesus cleanses me. The blood of Jesus cleanses from me. From all unrighteousness. From all unrighteousness. And keeps me. As I walk in righteousness, I walk in righteousness, in your fellowship and kingdom, in your fellowship and kingdom, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Father. Anything in the way, tell me, Lord, how to how to correct it, yes. how to adjust my it. ways. Yes. Father, I give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. Father, I give you praise in Jesus' mighty Father, name. Father, I give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus. All right, Jesus. Praise, 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 praise God. God. So we want to establish that blessing and cursing and show in the Word of God and show that it's redeemed. You see, it's real. You see, we can't say, well, I believe in Jesus and then go do all this accursed stuff and expect there to be no ramifications. That's not just not true. That's a lie. Jesus said, not one jot or one tittle of all the law will pass until all these things are fulfilled. Well, there's a lot yet to be fulfilled. The law... The law is still affected. The jot till the smallest little pieces of the of, of the letters of the language. It's all got to be fulfilled, my beloved brother. What it is is it's not a means. What Jesus did, he took the punishment away for those who will, who will believe in him. But uh, but but the other thing that Jesus did was there was you had to come to the measure of the stature of that in order to have an audience with God, in order to have your prayers answered, in order for God to look at you, Amen. in order for God to work for you. Well, Jesus fulfilled that. So that that's why he said, ask anything in my name. Yes. See, we're not asking in our own name. We're asking in the work that he's accomplished, yes. the Father. And we have audience with the Father because of what Jesus did. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. And that's why it's answered. Yes. You see, many of us still have Many things in our life that still like right, filthy rags. Yes. Amen. So as God shows us those Amen. dead works, those filthy rags, we've got to repent of them. Amen. Amen. And walk in that light. Amen? Amen. Now. And that is the practice of discipleship. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, let me just, I want to share a few other things. I want to speak about uh, Jesus talked about blessed, blessed, blessed. So I was really uh, touched by this the other day, and I want to I share a little bit of this now. Praise God. All right, let's look at this. Uh, blessed, here's blessings, blessings upon you. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Uh, do you have a humble heart? Do you fear the Lord? That's the beginning of wisdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen? So when we walk around like that, we're blessed. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. There's been a lot of mourning in my spirit lately. And I know it's the heart of Jesus about the devastation coming. But again, now I'm yielding to the spirit of God's mourning for all the loss of these eternal souls that's about to take place. In Israel and in the world, by virtue of Satan uh, trying to destroy humanity before he's destroyed, in Jesus judging the kingdom of darkness with all the world systems and the systems of the age and the thinkings of the age, as Jesus is <laughs> dismantling that, taking that down, and also to the cosmic warfare between the archangel Michael and the other angels warring against Satan in the heavenlies and throwing him down to the earth. And when that comes down to the earth, the loss of life. Now, the mourning. Now, he said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now, mourning also in the scripture also is a, is a way of saying fasting and praying. But again, fasting and praying is a thing that makes you more sensitive to God. It's, a, it's an opportunity where you can be very sensitive and God can show you anything that's between you and Him that needs to get out of the way. It's a way to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. It's a way to lay aside the natural things and concentrate more on the spiritual things 
and so that God can empower us. Amen. Amen. And uh, people, that is mourning is a way to have extra oil in your vessel. Now I'm going to share something else with you about mourning. The Apostle Paul talked about mourning in 2 Corinthians 5 or 1 Corinthians 5 in regards to sexual immorality, right, in the house of God. And he said, why haven't you mourned that this one be taken away? So he was saying, why haven't you, you should be sad for this. You should set yourself apart to God. You should fast and pray that this person be removed who's practicing, that's the key, not stumbled into a sin, but practicing sexual immorality. They should be put out. All right, now, he said, why haven't you mourned that this one be removed? Then he said, when I'm joined together with you the next time, my spirit is with you. Why haven't you already judged? I've judged this one already. You see, it's a simple judgment. God says, no sexual immorality. So if people are doing it, there it is. So they, so they are not really practicing in the household of God. So you go to it and say, hey, listen, the Word of God says this, you're supposed to do it. And they say, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to do whatever I want. Well, then they're a rebel, aren't they? So rebel, you don't want the leaving of rebellion in the house. You tell them, repent. If they don't, put them out. Okay? So that is a warning. But let's get on to the blessings. I want to leave. I want to give you some blessings here in Jesus' name. Uh, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek. Now, we're not meekness is not a false humility. Meekness is taking God at his word and doing what he says. Meekness is being under authority. Amen? Following God's instruction. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hunger and thirst. If you hunger and thirst for righteousness, for God's right way of doing things, Jesus said you are blessed. Now, I, I want you to think about this, because the Lord had me think about this. First off, Jesus said it. Who is he? He is God. God said if you do this, you are blessed. Now, if God says you are blessed, then you are blessed. Yeah. And the other thing that the Holy Spirit showed me is even one of these things that we practice righteously, practice right like this, just that blessedness of God come upon us is enough to carry the day, is enough to carry us. Now imagine if how many more that we put in practice how blessed we are. And the Lord has just wanted me to share this, the reality of how blessed we really are. And we should be speaking blessed, 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 blessed. So I've started doing this. Yes. Now I know Brother Matthew told me yesterday, he said, man, all of a sudden the power of God hit me. He said, the power of God was on me. Such power was on me, brother. I said, yeah, well, you know, it might be that this God told me to speak blessing on you and favor and on all that partake with us in the work of ministry. But but the point is, and I have also myself experienced the other day the power of God in an extraordinary way. And I mean, um, I, I don't have anything to compare it to because I don't know what anybody else experiences except for in my own life I've experienced the power of God before and this was extraordinary power. Like right now, when I'm talking about it, I feel, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit more so inebriating me even more, if you could say it. You know, that's what Paul said. Don't be drunk with wine, where's the next says, but be filled, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we're filled up, when we have the Holy Spirit, amen, we have the teacher, we have the spirit of truth, we have the revelator, we have the one that's showing us things that have come, we have the oil. And the more of them we have, obviously, the more oil we have, Amen. Amen? And we have the one that's shown us what is to come. The spirit of truth. Amen? amen? And amen. And so if I'm inebriated with the Holy Spirit, then I can't be inebriated with the world. If I'm inebriated with the Holy Spirit and the redemption in Jesus, then I can't be inebriated with anxieties and worries and cares. Can I? And so I need to be inebriated in God. We need this. Help us, Jesus. We need this. Now, Beloved, the Holy Spirit is just reminding me now. 
that God said in the last days he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And he also said that upon his men servants and maid servants he would pour out. Now he already said he would pour out on all. So why is he saying he would pour again? Because it's a double portion anointing for the last days. And again, he said through other prophets, you know, Joel the prophet there, he said through Apostle Peter that, but he said through other prophets about the early rain and the latter rain, and also through Apostle uh, James, I believe it was, about the Lord is waiting for the early rain and the latter rain together. So both the latter rain outpouring, the early rain, it is about the harvest. And people, you've got to remember, the harvest is twofold. The harvest is the harvest of the wicked, and the harvest is the harvest of the righteous. It's twofold. God is harvesting all, all humans of the earth in this hour. Okay? So I want you to understand this. So as God's Spirit is being outpoured, He's restoring the Word of God and the Spirit of God together in this hour to minister the Word of God and the Spirit of God through these vessels. And what's going to happen, people, is people's people that are lukewarm are going to go cold or go hot. Amen? Some people are cold, but because when that word of truth comes to them, they're going to go hot. Other people, because they don't pay attention to the words of Jesus, they're going to go cold, and they're going to leave the faith and leave the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet again, there's many wicked what because of the power on the outpouring brings such a power of the Holy Ghost in the early and the latter rain together for the harvest. That power is going to destroy delusions and deceptions off the people. It will destroy it off people. Other people, having known the truth, will reject the truth, and God will send them a strong delusion. But then some of the most, what you would think, the most hard people, as God's Spirit moves in the early and latter rain together, they are going to turn to the Lord. And they're going to be on fire for the Lord. And so the Lord is doing this, and it's amazing in our sight. Now, and as the prophet Hosea and other prophets spoke, the outpouring of God's Spirit is here. We have to position ourselves under the flow of that rain. Amen? Because God is raining down and under that outpouring. Amen? And some of the people, what's going to happen at that outpouring, as God moves in a powerful way like this, they're going to say no, and they're going to get harder, and they're going to say no, and they're going to get harder, and they're going to say no, and they're going to get harder, and they're going to come after God's people. I'm telling you, that's the way it is. All right? Now, Praise God. Now, here we go. Let's go on some more. So blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So he's saying in the pursuit of that, I'm guaranteeing that you're going to get filled up with everything that you want. So God's saying you pursue it, there's a reward for the pursuit of it. There will be an increase. There will be something that comes out of it. And then he said, blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Amen. Let's purify our hearts. Let's be merciful. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. But I'll say beware of false peace. But make, make peace in the principles of God's word between people. And if they all will follow God's word, then that's true peace. Not a false peace. Remember, there's a false peace being pursued. Yes. And they're trying to bring all religions together under a false peace. It's not a true peace. Now, blessed are, don't go for that deception. And in fact, that'll be part of the delusion of the end. The lie. That's part of the working of the lie. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He didn't say you're blessed for being persecuted because you did something stupid. He said, blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, if you're making a stand for God in the Word of God, you're making a stand for God in the Holy Spirit, you're doing what's right, and people attack you for it. You are blessed! 
Renew your mind. You are blessed. And then when they speak evil of you, you are blessed. When they persecute you for the wrong, you know, because you love God, because you're making a stand for God, because you're telling the truth in God. You are blessed. Amen. Blessed. Blessed. Now, we got to get renewed, man, so we don't feel the pain. Amen. Many of us have had a lot of healings and hurts from our past, and we got to come into Jesus. I am the Lord who healeth you, right? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news to the poor. What else? To heal the brokenhearted. Amen. In Jesus, hearts are healed. Amen. Now, spiritual and soul hurts and harms, there's no psychiatrist that can help you and heal you. There's no doctor, no heart surgeon that can help you and heal you. Amen. Only Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord who heals you. So the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Now, many of the outward problems, aches and pains and other things that people have in their bodies and even other sicknesses, the root of it is these other hurts and harms and other things that have happened in their life that have never been dealt with. Bitternesses and resentments and unforgivenesses and stuff like that are coming and manifesting in their body. When they look to the government, they go and they get a little they get a little pill here and a pill there. And next thing you know, everybody's stewed on pills and then we can't even afford all the we can't even afford all the pharmaceutical. We got have a special bill to afford all the pharmaceuticals for people. Well pharmaceuticals, the root of that word is in Revelation, isn't it? It's the word sorceries in the new in the King James Version. It's called sorceries in there, and the word is pharmakia. That's when you, pharmaceuticals, baby, that's pharmacies. That's chemicals to alter your state, okay? They will not, those who practice those things, will not inherit the kingdom of God. And how many people are taking their little pills to go to sleep and their little pills to wake up and their little... Pills because they're stressed at work and their little pills because they're stressed about the kids and their pills because they're stressed about finances. Come on, people. We are blessed if we're in the Lord. Yes. Amen. Blessed if we're in the Lord. Now, let's go some more. So, uh, blessed are you when men shall revile you. That's when they speak evil of you. They hate you. They don't like you. They speak against you because they don't, you know, sometimes they don't even know you're a Christian. They just come up and they got an unclean spirit and you got a righteous spirit in God and there's a conflict in the spirit and they ah, rah, 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 revile you. And it, what manifests is an unclean spirit. It's a reviling by that. So, uh, blessed, blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. For the sake of Jesus. Amen. Now. Now we'll look at a couple more. Let's look at. Uh, let, let's just keep going. Here's here's Jesus. Uh, he blessed his food and multiplied it to feed a multitude. Important. So we need to bless the work of our hands. We need to bless the funds and finances we have. Right? Follow the pattern of Jesus. We need to bless our food. Amen. Bless our house. Amen. Right? Bless all what is our provision and what we're going to consume and bless our seed that we're going to sow. Amen. Watch. So, and he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed. Amen. Looking up to heaven, he blessed. Amen. Now look at what, when Jesus says blessed, look what happens. Blessed. And he blessed. And break and gave the loaves to his disciples. And the disciples had enough to give it to all the multitude. So they had enough to, not only to sustain them and give, but to give to all the multitude. And we know the rest. There was still even baskets full left over. And in fact, the, and in fact, the less they had to start with, the bigger the amount that was left over. Wow. I know Brother Prince, Brother Derek Prince talks about that. The more that they started with, every, when Jesus blessed it, everybody was taken care of, and there was left over. And when they started with even less, and they gave it up, and he blessed it, amen, and multiplied it, everybody was taken care of. See, that's consumption. Everybody was taken care of. Everything was taken care of. 
and there was enough left over even afterwards to use. There was still seed to go with seed left over. Amen? So when Jesus blesses it, that's what it is. Amen? Amen. So we want to work according to the kingdom way. And, uh, and then Jesus blessed Peter. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my Father which is in heaven. So he blessed him because he had received revelation from God. Huh? So Jesus blesses us and we receive revelation. And the fact that we receive revelation from God states that God has blessed us. Amen? So we are blessed. blessed. Amen? So again, when we pursue after and hunger and thirst for righteousness, seek first of all the kingdom of God and his righteousness, when we hunger and pursue it, he adds all things. Amen. But he blesses us. He gives us it. He blesses it. He multiplies it. He blesses it. There's more than enough left over. Amen? Amen. So where a lot of us run into difficulty, it isn't the size of the amount in our head that we think, and we consume it. But we need to sow that extra into the field. Yes. Amen? We need to bless others with it. So he told them to feed him, right? They didn't. They said, well, what do you have? They said, this is what we have. This is what we can find. He blessed it, and he handed it to them. He said, now you take care of them. Amen? If you're not taking care of them, God isn't going to give you anymore. You understand? Yeah, you can make heaven, but you can struggle your whole time on earth. And what's coming up in the last days, you better get into this miracle provision because I'm concerned that people that aren't, People that aren't flowing with God like this, I'm concerned that they fall fall away from the Lord. You know, what are you going to do when you haven't tapped in to these truths in God? And they say, and you haven't eaten for a week or two, and they say, okay, take a chip in your hand or in your head, and then I'll let you eat. So a lot of people say, well, I'm going to be gone. I'll be raptured before any trouble. Okay, well, if that's the way the Lord does it, good. But there's a lot of people that think they're going to go in the rapture that are not going to go in the rapture. What about you? What are you going to do? Are you ready? Huh? What about the rest of the people that are going to believe in Jesus after the fact? Huh? Maybe they can grab a hold of this and know what to do. Understand the truth. Amen. Yeah. The truth is the truth. Jesus taught it all for a reason. Amen. For a reason. Now. Amen. So, God will bless those who are doing His will when Jesus returns. Blessed is that servant whom His Lord when he comes, shall find doing. What was he doing? He was giving the food to the servants, the right food at the right time, the right message at the right time. He was busy, he was working, and his, last, his master found him working when he came. But on the other hand, he said, here's a wicked servant who will be judged. He said, my master's delayed. Right? So that's a wicked servant. So he wasn't busy. He was, he was, he was, he wasn't busy, he wasn't getting things done. Amen. And so when the master came, that one was judged. God will bless those who are doing the will of God with you. So again, blessed is that servant whom his Lord shall, when he comes, shall find so doing. That's Matthew 24, 46. I should give you the scriptures. I didn't give it to you. And then Matthew 25, 34. Then the king shall say unto him on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Amen? Mm -hmm. Blessed. Amen? Come, you blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom. Those that are doers of the word. Doers of the word. Doers yes. of the word. Not those who are self-deceived, looking in the mirror, walking away, and forget who they are, not doing the word. But those that are doing the word. Yeah. The best way to be ready and be prepared, watch and pray. That's a word about being ready Wait, watch what's happening around you. Be prepared. Be ready. Amen. Cleanse ourselves. Amen. The bride has made herself ready without a spot, without wrinkle. No anxieties, no worries. Amen. No sins, no dirt, no filth, no blemishes. Amen. No blemishes. Amen. Cleanse ourselves. Amen. Be ready. Now, um, again, there's a blessing on those who obey the word of God. Luke chapter 11, verse 28. But he said, yes, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. 
My, 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 a blessing upon those who hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. And you have to understand, as Christians, we're not just supposed to hear the word of God, we're supposed to keep it. Anybody who's in the faith of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he expects you to hear his word and keep it. Yes. That means you got to do it. you got to put it into practice. So we are blessed in practicing the word of God. That means that every word of God that we have kept, that we do keep and have kept and do practice, a blessing is upon us. And therefore, we are blessed, aren't we? Amen. We are blessed. Amen? Now, now there's a blessing upon those that are watching for the coming of the Lord. And you can find this in Luke chapter 12, verse 37 and 38. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find watching. Watching. Now, he, he told us all these things that will happen at the time he's coming. Are we watching? Are we watching for his coming? Are we busy about it? Watching. Verily I say to you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. This is the master, the Lord of lords, the king of kings. Amen. The judge of all the earth. The judge of all men. Amen. The one who will culminate and bring all enemies as a footstool under Almighty God. He said, you're blessed. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to gird my waist. You're going to sit down. I'm going to feed you. And I'm going to gird my waist. I'm going to serve you. Who's that blessing for? The one who's watching. Shoot, man. I feel the power of God here. Thank you, Jesus. And he will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. He said, no matter what watch he comes in, the first, the second, third, no matter when he comes, if he finds you watching, watching for him, waiting for him, looking for him, amen? Amen? Busy about, he's about to come, I'm busy about doing the master's business. Special blessing, amen? Special blessing. Now, now, Jesus released the blessing upon everybody before he ascended into heaven. Luke chapter 24, verse 50 and 51. And he led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands and blessed them. He lifted his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he parted from them and carried up into heaven. And what did the angel say? Hey, why are you standing here watching? This same Jesus will come in like manner. But they saw him and said, and he was caught up into the clouds of heaven and went up before him into the heaven or the air. Amen. And it says it again in Revelation chapter 1. And it parallels uh, Thessalonians. Amen. So, there it, so he blessed them. Amen. So we also just saw that he blesses when he comes back. So he blessed, blessed us all when he left, all those who believe. He blesses all those that are watching, believing and watching when he comes back. And Jesus released a blessing on all who would believe and believed in him. Amen. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you have seen me and have believed. Excuse me, let's say it again. Jesus, uh, Jesus said to Thomas, because you have seen me and you have believed. But blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So those of us that believe in Jesus, just because we believe in Jesus, if we have not seen him, but we believe in him, we are blessed, blessed, blessed. Amen? Amen. Now, praise God. I'll give you one more and, I, and then probably, now, now let, let, let's just keep going for a little bit. He said, bless again. Um, God blesses those who give. The Apostle Paul speaking through the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. I have showed you in all things how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give. Blessed to give. Blessed to give. Blessed to give. More blessed to give. More blessed to give than even to receive. More blessed to give, God said. 
If God said it's more blessed to give than even receiving, we all know what a blessing receiving is, but it's even more blessed to give. Come on, renew our mind. We all want to receive, but we all don't want to give. we got to understand that giving is even more blessed than receiving. Yes. Now, how about Abraham, right? His The blessings of Abraham. What about Abraham? He was blessed in everything. Abraham was blessed in all things. And we said, it's, the scripture says, Galatians 3.14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So we also, the, we have the promise of the Spirit through faith. That is the guarantee that we have entered into the blessings of Abraham. No question about it. Through Christ Jesus. And the blessing of Abraham, again, is he was blessed in all things. God blessed him in everything he said his hand to. Everything that he did was blessed. And we are blessed of God in those same blessings of Abraham. Amen? Amen. Now, now let's watch out and let's not be like Esau. Right? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 17. Esau failed to take possession of his blessings. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And so what did he do? So he couldn't find repentance. So we better take hold of the blessing now, not squander it. What did he do? For his appetites, for his natural appetites. He gave his inheritance away so he could have a tasty bowl of porridge. But, you know, it was a natural appetite. And God never granted him repentance. We need to walk in the fear of God because we never know. God might not grant us repentance. We may that one last time we do something, God may not grant us repentance. So we better stop. Amen. We better fear the Lord. We better walk in obedience. And thank God that he's merciful. But we need to keep that in mind. God is not obliged to continue to overlook uh, our, our knowing sin. Amen? Now, Jesus commanded us to bless our enemies. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So again, this is how we're to be a blessing. He said, bless them that curse you, and pray for them that despitefully use you. Uh, Luke 6, 28. That was also Matthew 5, 24. In Romans 12, 14, the apostle says, Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Okay, now. Um, now we're to return also blessing for cursing. 1 Peter 3, 9. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing. Amen. But that means let's not get into debates, man. Let's not get into that railing, uh, you know, banging and banging. You know, that's one, that's an easy trap. But... Uh, contrary wise blessing knowing that you are there unto called that you should inherit a blessing he's saying you need to practice being a blessing because you in that you inherit a blessing and that God would continue to multiply blessings on you so be a blessing so Acts 326 Jesus was sent to bless us with salvation salvation itself is a blessing from God. Yes. Acts 3.26 Unto you first, God having raised up His Son Jesus, sent Him to bless you in turning away every one of you from His iniquities. So it is a blessing to turn away people from their iniquities. So don't listen to the false teachers, false pastors, false teachers, false prophets, false evangelists, false apostles that don't ever want to preach repentance turn people away from their iniquities. Amen? Because it is a blessing to turn away from iniquities. And they come into the blessing of salvation. It is a requirement yes. to enter the blessing. It is the first requirement and the first thing that's preached about the kingdom of God. The first thing preached about the kingdom of God is not God is love. The first thing preached about the kingdom of God is God's requires repentance. She said, why do I have to repent? Good, I'm glad you asked. Because the wages of sin is death. Because all, all we like sheep have gone astray. He just turned to our own way. Because all of our own righteousness has filthy rags. Amen? 
And the wages of sin is eternal death and damnation under the wrath of God. That's why I got to repent. All right. Now, now we are blessed with spiritual blessings. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. So we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings. How about Melchizedek blessing Abraham? For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, which means peace, priest of the Most High God, right, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. So Abraham went out in the, in, in the name of the Lord and destroyed these other kings. Amen. Amen. These other lofty rulers that were in, uh, contrary to God. Now, Melchizedek, now Jesus is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, king of Salem. Jesus is the prince of peace, the king of Salem. Priest of the Most High God. The priesthood was changed in Jesus, right, from the Levitical priesthood to the Melchizedek priesthood. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And uh, priest of the Most High God, Jesus is the chief priest, amen, of the order of Melchizedek. And God has created in the new creation a kingdom of priests, amen. Uh, we will reign with him as kings and as priests, amen. Now, he met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. So if he blessed Abraham, then he had to be greater than Abraham. All right, now, in Hebrews 7, 6, he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham. So Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils of the victory. People, when we're in Jesus, everything that comes into our life is the spoils of the victory. Yes. All of our increase is the spoils of the victory. It was the God of Abraham that gave him the victory over all these other kings, and he scarfed up the spoils. Not only what they had taken from him, but all because he defeated them, their spoils. It was the God of heaven that gave him the victory. His high priest comes out and Abraham tithes, tithes before Moses, before the law of Moses, tithes to this priesthood, to this priest. Amen. But he whose descent is not counted from them, or in other words, from the Levites, or well, in other words, from that what Moses instituted, the Levitical priesthood, then received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. Amen? Mm -hmm. So again, this is blessed in Abraham. To tithe is blessed in Abraham. Blessed that there is another priesthood that receives them. The priesthood, right, that didn't come out of the loins of man per se, but came out of the heavens. Amen? Uh, the, uh, this Melchizedek priesthood, this guy, right? He had no place, came from nowhere, didn't know where he went to, just appeared. What else did he do? He had communion too, didn't he? They had communion. They had the bread and the wine too. See, the communion. And blessed him that had the promises. And he spoke a blessing. Amen? Amen. So when we give to God, God speaks a blessing upon us. A blessing upon the tithes. A blessing upon the offerings. A blessing upon the alms. Amen? And alms is the poor and the needy. Amen? That's an alms. That's acts of mercy. Amen? Now, blessings are released by faith. Blessings are released by faith. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both sons of Joseph and worship, leaning upon the top of his staff. So blessings by faith, blessing by faith, and uh, he blessed both of them. See, word blessings, but you can also, with words, and lay hands on people, and bless them in the name of the Lord, and be a blessing. Amen? Now, uh, God's going. God will bless those who endure temptation. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Amen? When we overcome temptation, we are blessed. Yes. Amen? Blessed. So temptation is an opportunity to overcome, endure, go beyond it, so that the blessing of God could come upon us. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Amen? we got a crown of life coming, people, a crown. That's one of those crowns. One of those rewards, one of those crowns. There's other crowns, too. 
Now God will bless those who do his work. James 1.25 But whoso, uh, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, love, and continues therein, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Blessed in his deed. So there it is again. Everything we do that God has instructed us in the word brings the blessing of God. Every deed of obedience we do the, brings the blessing of God upon our head. Now, why am I emphasizing this moment so much? And what, what we were teaching on earlier is in the context of God's provision upon us. In the first part, we said, why through the cross of Christ? And we saw how we come in and we, we were under the blessings and not curse. But here we see that as we continue to do what Jesus said, everything we do that Jesus said brings a blessing upon us, a reward upon us. Amen. And it brings a provision of God upon us. We are blessed in the doing of the thing. Amen. That's why we need to give words of life, encouragements, amen, amen. Uh, tracts, Bibles. What can we give? A uh, preaching, a uh, teaching. I mean, today we have an effective tool of being a blessing. The social media things. We have effective tools of blessing, amen, where we can give out scriptures and give out a word and share uh, videos and audios and in written things to share the Word of God to give them a blessing and a revelation in the Word of God and bless them and in the doing of it God has blessed us amen and provided for us so let's hear that again James 1 25 God will bless those who do his work now some of us we don't see anything because we're still doing all of our own works and not his Amen. Some of us, we're doing all of these programs in the name of God and all these nice things we can do in the name of God, but God has an answer to do it. That's not the work he's given to us. But let's look at this. James 1.25. But whoso looketh unto the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed, in his deed, through his deed, because of his deed. Blessed, 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 blessed. Now, now seven blessings, seven blessings in the book of Revelation. St. John, the apostle of love. Revelation 1.3. Blessed is he that reads and keeps Excuse me. Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of the prophecy. So you're blessed in what you read. You're blessed that you hear the words of the prophecy and keep those things. In other words, do them. Do what he's saying. What the Lord is telling you here, the revelation of the unfolding of Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords and as judge. Amen. In his judgments upon mankind and Satan and the, the whole satanic system. Amen. He said, blessed is the one that reads and hears the words of the prophecies and keeps the things written in for the time is at hand. Revelation 14, 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. This is in the period of the time, it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. The last, the last Sabbath year of humanity and of human, the human race having Satan as the prince of this world over it. The last Sabbath year of that. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. So they're blessed. 
special place, special blessing on those that die in the Lord at that time. Yes, says the Spirit, that they'll rest from the labors. Okay, so their work is done. How do they end their work? Because they die. Because someone kills them. Right? And so then their works follow them. Their works are going to follow them into reward. They're going to be rewarded. Amen? So I say, no matter how it doesn't, remember, you cannot overcome the devil if you're afraid for your life. They overcame, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Satan, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the work of Jesus in the cross, and that effective, powerful blood working for me now, that blood on my doorpost and on my lentil of all my affairs, my personal life, my house, right, my family, my business, all the affairs, the preaching, the teaching, the witness that I do over all of my life, everything that has to do with my life, amen, everything that I touch and everything that touches me, the blood of Jesus is over it, amen, amen? but he says, um, where was I? So if you're afraid of losing your life, you'll never be effective for Jesus. In fact, you're already a slave of fear, and Jesus died to deliver us from the bondage of fear. Amen? And again, that's in the founding teachings, Laying an Apostolic Foundation, Part 1, and you can find that in rainapostolicnetwork.wordpress.com. The MP3 teachings in the series is Laying an Apostolic Foundation, Part 1. Jesus died to deliver us from the bondage of the fear of death. Amen. So, so they overcame by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. Their mouth was agreeing with God in speaking the Bible, the judgments of God, the executed judgment. Amen. And they did not love their life to the death. See, they picked up their cross, the death of self. I'll follow Jesus wherever. And you know, if something takes me out, God is sovereign and he cannot take me out, cannot kill me, cannot harm me, cannot do anything unless God allows it. Amen? All right, now. So again, uh, so blessed blessed are those, again, if they, they die from that point, and uh, their works will follow them. And in Revelation 16, 5, Behold, I come as a thief. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches, right? So now, if you're watching, he doesn't come as a thief, does he? How does a thief come? A thief comes to those who sleep. A thief comes to those who are not alert. A thief cannot steal from those that are awake and alert. A thief has to come to those who are asleep in order to get away with his thievery. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches. Now this is Revelation 16, 15. He's saying this to people. So obviously there's going to be people that are going to be alive, living, that follow the Lord at this time. That are going to be here in these times to experience this. That are going to know these blessings, going to know this word, and, and get a blessing out of it. Amen? Okay, okay. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches, right? So watches and keeps his garments. That means you got to keep the uh, plural garments. That means you got to keep your mind, keep your soul, keep your spirit, keep your body. See, we got to keep ourselves chaste virgin for the Lord. Amen. We're betrothed as a virgin to Jesus. Amen. Now, he said, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they see his shame. Amen. And then Revelation 19 and 9, And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I'm going to say with that, many are called, but few are chosen. You know, I'm going to say it again. He said right here, you got to watch, you got to keep your garments, you got to look, you got to watch, you got to be expecting him, right? I mean, you look at over and over and over, Jesus said it. 
The ones that are sleeping aren't going to make it. The foolish virgins aren't going to make it. The one who says his master is delayed isn't going to make it. Still his master, but he's thinking his master's delayed, so he's not paying attention. He's not busy in his master's vineyard. He's not feeding the flock. He's not feeding the people of God. He's not feeding the other servants. He is the steward over the servants, but he's not doing anything about it. He's saying it plenty of time. The master's coming later. I'm not going to do anything. And he said unto me, right, blessed are they which are called to the, unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Remember the ten virgins again. And the time came at the midnight hour, and the bridegroom came, and the door was open. The time of the marriage supper. The time of the bridegroom was there. The marriage supper. The time was there. The door was open. Five were ready. Five weren't. Five entered in. The door was shut. The other five ran out to try to get enough oil to get in. Right? And have all their garments like they ought to be. Try to get everything all set. But it was too late. They came back and he said, I don't know you. In other words, they didn't follow the word. They didn't follow the teaching and put it into practice. And so they weren't ready. They weren't ready. So, he, and he said again, Revelation 19, 9. And he said unto me, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. In Revelation 20 and 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. The first resurrection is the dead in Christ that are raised. And the, those that are alive in Christ, it's called the catching up. Or what is called in common terms, the rapture. If, if there's a dispute about a rapture, there should not be its resurrection from the dead. It is the blessed hope that will be raised raised up to meet Jesus. Raised up, they'll be counted worthy to attain to the resurrection and see Jesus face to face and forever be with him, thereby escaping the wrath of God, thereby not experiencing the wrath of God. The finality of the wrath of God is a lake of fire, eternal judgment. Okay? So, uh, Blessed is he, the blessed, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death, that's the lake of fire. The second death is the lake of fire, has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. Amen. Priests of God and of Christ. He had kingdom of priests, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Will reign with Jesus a thousand years on the earth and then a new heavens and earth a judgment a, a, Satan will be let out for a moment right um, the, the other people will come into a judgment the dead sinners that have already died in their sins will be raised in the body that they failed in, the body that they sinned in and they will be judged and they will be thrown into the lake of fire the second death a place of torment and torture, and and I, I can't even put in words. Uh, in tribulation, torment, and I don't know agony. I mean, I can't even find human words what that place will be like. And they will be thrown in that place. So blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. So he's blessed, but also holy. Have to be holy, right? Verse six. Behold, I come. Quickly, it's Revelation 22 and 7. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Let, 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 let's, let's talk about that last one for a minute. Revelation 22 and 7. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. God is speaking the future here. And now we see that a lot of that future is in the now of history. You know, it's now. A lot of that's happening. And he's saying, blessed is the one that keeps the words, the prophecies of the book. There's a blessing in keeping and doing. There's a blessing in putting into practice the warnings, the admonishments, the corrections, the adjustments, amen, the understanding of what is taking place in the prophecy of this book. There is a blessing upon it. Thank you, Lord. 
Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Amen. In Revelation 22 and 14. Blessed are they who do his commandments. That's what it means by being a doer of the word. Blessed are they that do his commandments. He didn't say hears them, but does them. Blessed are they that do his commandments, for they, that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates in the city. Amen. Enter into the gates of the city and have the right to the tree of life. The, the right to the tree of life was cut off since the fall of Adam and Eve. The tree of life and access to it was cut off since the rebellion in the garden. So Jesus died and fulfilled the righteous requirement, he became the rebellion and the punishment as the last Adam. He paid with himself, he paid with his life's blood. As Isaiah the prophet said, his soul became the offering, the sin offering. His soul became the sin offering for our guilt and shame and condemnation and consequence. Amen? And when payment was made for the whole human race, whosoever will repent towards God, believe in Him, and do His commandments. Turn from rebellion now and do His commandments uh, for, for them. Amen. Blessed, and that tree of life will be opened up again. Amen. And will forever be with the Lord, and will be able to go in through the front gate of the, the front gate of the true place of God. Not even that which is formed after man's hand, but that which is formed after God. Amen. Now, so I say to you, you are blessed, and you see other areas of the word that you can put into practice and can be blessed. It is God that has commanded the blessing on those who practice those things. You see, being a disciple, which people don't hardly teach anymore, but Jesus called us to be disciples and to make disciples. Commanded us to make disciples of the nations. He never said make converts. There's no such thing as convert. There's an entrance in where a person can come alive so that they can perceive and enter the kingdom. But they have to do the word. We all have to do the word. And remember, Apostle James said, if we're not doing the word, we're deceived. Self-deceived. Amen? So in doing the word are these great blessings in the Lord. So be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are blessed. Continue doing, doing that which is blessed. And remember, when you are giving the word and revelation and truth of God, and the mercy of God, and the peace of God, when you are giving that to people, when you are giving them salvation, and turning them from their iniquities, it is a blessing upon you, and a blessing upon them, and God is multiplying the blessing back to you, amen? So it looks to me like if we do more of the word, we're more blessed. And it looks like if we give more people more of the word, and turn more to the Lord, we're even more blessed, and more blessings. So by doing what God says, abundance more of blessings can come upon our life. So be blessed in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I thank you. The enemy will not take this word from anybody. As Isaiah the prophet said to Lord, those who were being trained by him, he said, I seal the words of God to you. And um, that bind them to you, I seal them. And so, Lord, every word that's been spoken accurately by the Spirit of truth, every word that's accurate, as the word is accurate in Jesus, Lord, I seal that word to them in Jesus' name, that no enemy will be able to pluck it from them or take it from them. And Father, I thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. And um, and Lord, and anything, Lord, if it's been if it's been misspoken, misstated, untrue, unclear, Lord, then let that thing be removed and let that thing be thrown to the side, Lord, because we only want your words, your ways. And we want your Holy Spirit upon it, Lord. And we want your people 
walking in the spirit of truth and walking in the word of truth. And I thank you, Lord, that all of these words effectually work in all those who have heard today, all those who have believed today, Lord, your words effectually walk in them. And Father, once again, Lord, I release the ministering spirits to move and release the blessings and the favor of God and the grace of God and the peace of God and even the mercy of God upon all these people in the hearing in Jesus' name, even in the atmosphere, Lord even in the atmosphere around them, Lord. We release the peace, the blessings, amen, the favor, the mercy, the grace of God in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we release the provision. We release health. We release healing. We speak peace to minds. We command tormented minds to be free and be delivered in Jesus' name. Confusion goes out of minds. Bondages goes out of minds in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Lord, for that one with that piercing of that heart now, we pull the spear out and we command, Father, in Jesus' name, healing of the broken heart, healing of the stabbed hearts, healing of the pierced hearts. Yes, Lord. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, by the Spirit of God, by the operation of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit now goes in and gets every root and tentacle of that bitterness out of those hearts in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And right now, resentment in the name of Jesus. Right now, all resentments are pulled out. They're delivered of every resentment. They go free from resentments in Jesus' name. And Father, we release a spirit of forgiveness Lord, that they would recognize your forgiveness to them. And Lord, that they forgive all others as you have commanded. Father, we just release a spirit of forgiveness, a spirit of reconciliation in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In Jesus' name, we break the power of the devil. All principalities, all powers, you are bound. All wicked spirits in the heavenly realms. Even the world rulers of darkness, stop your operations and strategies against them. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, your power is destroyed. The Son of God is manifested now, here, today, now, and destroys and loosens and dissolves all the works of the devil. It's for this purpose that his blood was shed that he lives now, and that the Holy Spirit and power is here to destroy the works of the devil off these souls today, off these lives, off these spirits, off these minds, off these intellects, off these emotions, off these wills, and off these bodies in Jesus' name. Father, we release now wholeness, the prospering of the soul, Lord, now in Jesus' name. Our prayer is above all things that they prosper, amen, in their spirit and be healed in their soul, Lord, and strengthened in their body. Thank you, Lord. We pray above all things that they prosper and be in health even as their soul prospers. We command in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for souls to be healed today, right now, with all bitterness. We command rejection to be healed in the name of Jesus. Rejection comes out of those people. God will never leave you and God will never forsake you. Turn to the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So be blessed, people. Till next time, signing off the broadcast. So now i got to save it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't, don't wait my head. I, I wait my head when my head almost fell out. 
and I'll lay my head on careful. They're loaded right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, thank you for the power of the Spirit of God moving, setting free and delivering. Hallelujah. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Whoever knows the Son of God, amen, the Lord Jesus Christ, shall be free indeed. Know the Son. Follow the Son. Do what the Son says. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. He has your future. Amen. You do not need to worry. You do not need to have a care or be anxious for anything. The Lord Jesus Christ has those who follow him. Amen. Don't be afraid. Lord bless you. Amen. See this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, bless you in Jesus' name.